been live. I usually like to look at it from one of my other devices as well, but we'll see how that goes. And we're live. I'm sorry. All right. So this is another episode of the Purpose Pod. I have with me today, Miss Amanda Chamber. Hello. Hello. What's up? What's up? What's up? So Amanda here is the reason why I was able to write this lovely thing here. Can I speak? She is uh, a great light of hope for us all. <laughs> so oh, I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. that. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Amanda. Let them know your name, where you're from, and maybe something interesting about you. So I'm Amanda Chambers. I am originally from Baltimore, Maryland. Don't judge me, y'all. <laughs> and um, when I was 13, I moved to a little town called Jacksonville, North Carolina, mm -hmm. military town. And so I'm kind of like halfway from the north, halfway a southern bell. It just depends on what day you get me. <laughs> and uh, something interesting about me, I am a craft nerd. I just I love yeah, why you can find you can usually find me covered in paint glitter. Those yeah, things. the fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're one of the uh, reasons why people can't. They might have glitter on their face or something like that, and it's because of you. DLP in the house. You see? Can you see the comments? You can see the comments, right? No, I can't see anything. <laughs> oh, you can't. Oh man, I'm sorry. Hold on, let me see. Maybe let me see if I can help Amanda out, y'all. You can see me. Right? Oh, I can see you. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, you know what? Let me see. Bam. There we go. Okay, can now I yeah. Okay, so I'll just have to be able to uh, post whatever people put up so you can see it. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so we're going to get this show on the road by first asking, so what was life like before you became an author? So what was that? What was your life like before that? It was normal. I yeah. mean, I was a English professor. I've been uh, teaching college since I was twenty eight. Um, so that annoying English professor that makes you write the narrative essay and the descriptive <laughs> essay. That's you. <laughs> um, and I was working from home. I was teaching online because I had my beautiful daughter in 2013 and wanted to stay home with her. So I switched from face to face teaching to, mm -hmm. um, online and, I mean, that was it. Stay at home mom. My husband was in news media. So wow. um, we moved from North Carolina to Florida and we lived mm -hmm. in Florida for um, about three years. And that was it. It was just regular old normal life. Nothing spectacular. I wasn't like, you know, a rapper or something <laughs> like that. An aspiring rapper. Right. Aspiring rapper. <laughs> so, so what made you go into writing books then? Like if you were just a regular mom, regular person, regular wife, like what made you go into writing books? So I actually started a book in 2008 mm -hmm. and I was in grad school. And anyone who's ever gotten an English degree of any kind knows that it's like super writing intensive, right? Yeah. So I got this great idea over winter break 2008. I was going to start writing a book. Mm -hmm. Good idea. I'm on break. I don't have anything else to do. I worked on campus and I went to school there. So, you know, when school's out, everything is out. Right. So I was like, I'm going to, you know, so I sit there and I'm watching <laughs> Tales from the Hood. <laughs> of course. And I oh, um, and I start writing, start writing. I get about three or four chapters in. School starts back up. I have to go back. I'm now in thesis mode and I'm writing my thesis. My thesis was a book in and of itself. Uh -huh. So now I'm like, oh, I'm writing this book and I'm writing this book, but I'm paying mm. to write this book a lot of money to get this graduate degree. Yeah. This book isn't making me any money right now. This book is costing me money. Let me finish mm. this book. Yeah. And then I'll come back to it. And I, after that, I graduated, mm. got my first job. Um, then I had my second full time job and I was running um, a university writing center. Which yeah. And I just didn't have time for the book. Mm. So, and then I got pregnant. I was a first time mom, first time pregnancy. That is a lot. So yeah. I never, ever had time again to 
work on the book. And then in 2015, the very end of the year, we found out that the university, well, the college, it was an online college um, that I was working for, was actually going to close all of its North American campuses. Wow. Yeah. That's and crazy. that translated into no job. Yeah. So for the first time in years, I was actually sitting there with no job. And I was like, well, what am I going to do? And my husband was like, well, you know, luckily, we're not going to be living out of the car while it's being repossessed. I can carry the bills. Right. So, you know, <laughs> figure out what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And I was like, OK. And then I came back to him. I was like, I think I want to finish that book. Yeah. And that's how everything kind of started moving. And that was the end of 2015. He was like, OK, finish the book. You've got until the end of 2016. And I was like, whoa, wait mm -hmm. a minute. Nobody said anything about dates. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, no, no. <laughs> end of 2016. So you were challenged. Was like, oh, OK. And I mean, I did. I put it out in August of 2016. So I, I met the deadline. And yeah. beat it by about four months. So that's good. You said you beat it by four months, right? By four months. Yeah. And um, and so that was pretty much how the whole writing career started. Hmm. I've been an avid book reader. I've been reading since I was three. Yeah. And always read, always read, and then started writing maybe middle school, mm -hmm. end of middle school. So it's always been there. It was just that I was always doing something else. In high school, I was too busy, you know. Being popular yeah. and being all that, being popular, being bad, and stuff, <laughs> like, singing in, in chorus. That was my yeah. claim to fame, and you know all of that. And so I was too busy being, you know, a teenager. Then I was too busy in college when I went away to college. Then I was mm -hmm. too busy figuring out what I was going to do when I finished college. And then yeah. grad school, marriage, baby. So that was like the first time I was just really like, huh, I could write this book. Mm -hmm. So that's how it happened. So do you feel like your husband giving you that challenge pushed you further or were you going to end up writing it anyways? Was that challenge helpful? <laughs> I would have ended up writing it anyway, mm -hmm. but we still might have been waiting for it. OK, so you would be like, oh, I get to it December. Distracted. You know, the that the, I can't remember what that cartoon is, but it's a, a puppy, a dog. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, look, I'm walking squirrel. That's right. it. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. So, right. So, oh, things to, look at, things to do. <laughs> and so him giving me that ultimatum yeah. was a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I don't like ultimatums and challenges. Mm -hmm. He knows that about me. So yeah. that, that was strategic. Standard yeah. strategic. So were you, were you at a point where if you did not publish the book, it would have altered your life completely? Or, you know, had you not uh, published that book? That was the catalyst and where I am now. Mm -hmm. If I had not published that book and the things that happened as a result of that book in being in existence, mm -hmm. I would have found another online position. I'd be still teaching mm -hmm. uh, and none of this would have happened. And consequently, can I speak? Might not be in existence <laughs> because that That's was true. I was out here struggling. <laughs> right. You know, so it, it was the catalyst was that started me yeah. on that journey so mm -hmm. it was a good chance you know that not not you would have eventually you were you you had it in your mind your book was yeah. coming it yeah. just might not have been out now because you wouldn't have been getting those you know oh wow. yeah right because i was i was extra procrastinating <laughs> yeah. You? So, yeah you know you you may it may have taken a little bit longer because you know mm -hmm. I'm sure at some point you were like, this lady is not yeah. calling and texting me. I'm going to block her. But, on point. You know, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, so, but you, you would have gotten it, but it may not have been. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, it, 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 my book and, and that ultimatum that my husband mm -hmm. kind of issued, you know, that was the catalyst in mm -hmm. getting the ball rolling to where everything happened the way that it happened. Yeah. So what inspires you to continue to write? Like, do you get inspired based off of things that you see in life or a new, a new thing, you know, cause you're in the erotic romance type thing. Right. So, you know, yeah, yeah. explain, ex first of all, let's, you know, let's go here. So <laughs> when I first, you know, heard like erotic romance, I was like, man, these girls are <laughs> you know so i was like you know i didn't know much about it so can you tell others who 
may not know what it's about and you know and they may be afraid to read it because one maybe they're religious or two maybe mama said don't read those things right you know why should they read erotic romance so erotic yeah. romance is a subgenre of erotica right mm -hmm. so you have this erotica and you have stories that have no romance to them that fall under the erotica mm -hmm. BDSM and all of that 50 shades of gray level oh, stuff lying that's, in the tire that's kind of a little <laughs> yeah that was away, away from <laughs> where i am that yeah so romance is um when i was growing up i used to steal my mother's harlequin romances sorry mom hold on what did you say i didn't uh, when, I, when i was growing up i used to steal my mother's harlequin romances oh, oh, um, oh sorry mom God. and girl. those <laughs> She's going to kill me. So, um, so I would steal them and they would, you know, the romance story would be there. The storyline would be there, of course. But when I grew up, I realized that there were elements yeah. of romance that were missing, i.e. the fact that there are quite a few people that do sleep together before marriage. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like that wasn't telling the complete story. And so right. when I started writing romances, I wanted to tell the complete story, you know, mm -hmm. the entire romance out of all the couples I know, there's only one couple that I know that, you know, did not sleep together prior to marriage. Yeah. And so I feel like I'm not necessarily, and sometimes it, it's kind of like, eh, stop calling it erotica. Mm -hmm. Because when you read erotica, typically you're thinking of th that, that more hardcore and mm. my sweet romance where people fall in love. There's some suspense in it. You know, some people tell me that uh, they were like, oh, wait, 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 what just happened? I got to go back and read that because yeah. there's a suspense aspect to it. Mm -hmm. um, but I just really feel like I'm telling a complete romance story. Yeah, it's like a it's like a movie. Right. But right. In a book, you know, so right. it's just written down. And I don't I, I don't see why it could get a neck like it being the erotic side like people always act strange when we talk about sex like people yeah. act like sex isn't the reason why half of us well half of us all of oh, us but, are here whoa. i don't know if anybody are made from machines yet but right. you know so, so you know getting that in a story form does nothing but add maybe even value like even what y'all were saying when you know when we had our dlp uh soiree yeah. you know i was like you know y'all was putting me on game with the whole mm -hmm. <laughs> erotic uh mm -hmm. writings and stuff y'all like look this a change of life like y'all was out there selling it i was like these ladies are are passionate about it so yeah. is I that is it like i'm telling the story and yeah. I, every romance is is unique the ones that are made up in stories the ones that mm -hmm. happen in real life i tell everyone I met my husband in 2003. He had moved down from, he's from New York. Mm -hmm. And um, he had moved down to North Carolina. I was still an undergrad and he's my older brother's frat brother, right? Mm -hmm. So he, um, so, you know, I liked him. I thought he was cute. He thought I was Andre's little sister and he ignored me. So how yeah. And so I was in a long-term relationship after that, got out the long-term relationship. And I was like, man, I spent my whole college career in a relationship, like everybody's mm -hmm. out here wilding out, going to the club, going home with folks. Yeah, and I was out here playing wifey, and it didn't even work out. I'm about to yeah. wild out. I am right. not allowed to do whatever I want to do. <laughs> they cut. I was also still a little scared to mm -hmm. be doing whatever. So I was right. like, you know "What? I'm gonna have a one night stand. Mm. What? I'm gonna do it with someone I kind of know. Yeah, so oh, that I don't get killed or something. Yeah, right." <laughs> So I chose this dude named Stan. Mm -hmm. We married. We've been married almost 13 years. That married, one night Stan. Very well. I night, that went, very well. Went to many nights. Went to, I, I, I've lost count. Lost count. So, <laughs> whole last name, whole child together. Whole child. Is this together. Right. My, my one attempt at a one night. So clearly I don't I do not do that very well. Yeah. yeah. But, that, but that's our love story. I mm -hmm. thought I was out here, you know, having whatever hot girl summer it was in, in right. December of 05, whatever the term was back then. <laughs> and right. ended up with an entire husband. And that's that's a love story. Mm -hmm. You know, and everybody's is unique. And I just want to tell these unique 
believable because there are some aspects, you know, a lot of my friends will read the story and be like, so you just going you just going to put me in a character. Yeah. Uh. I'm like <laughs> a little bit. Sorry. So <laughs> that's not how it works, man. <laughs> yeah, kind of messed yeah. that up. Didn't I mean? Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> so so do you feel that writing your style of writing has increase the value of your relationship and your marriage that was not on the questionnaire i'm sorry i'm just these questions are just spawning off because of i'm happy doing what i do yeah and so the fact that he has supported me mm -hmm. you know every marriage has its ups and downs but through everything that we've been through we've been together for 15 years Man, we've 15. been through all kinds of stuff yeah and his support you know, even when he's like, what are you doing now? He's yeah. just like, oh, go ahead. Go. Yeah. Just do it. You know, when I told him I wanted to go back to grad school, he was like, all right, what? Okay. Go and just <laughs> don't fail. You yeah. know, <laughs> so that, you know, it has increased my love and respect for him because it doesn't matter what I come to him with. You know, yeah. when you started working with me, I had that huge afro. You mm -hmm. the afro, yeah, as you can see. Couldn't and so I'll just come up to him and be like, I want to cut all my hair off. And he's like, okay. And, mm -hmm. you know, so he supports the things that I want to do. So that part and that, um, you know, that support of my writing, mm -hmm. it has made it exponentially easier for me to write. I don't have to worry about, you know, <sighs> I got to hide my writing and my time because right. I'm not going to support it. You know, he, he's got my six year old who thought she was being interviewed today as well. Oh, she thought she was getting interviewed. Oh, my ma'am. Oh, she can get interviewed. No, <laughs> you don't want that kind of life. You don't want that. You don't want that life. Yeah. So he's got her right now entertaining her in his office um, yeah. because, you know, he, I was like, I got to, I, I, people can see me, so I need to. <laughs> I need her to be with you, yeah, and she's mm -hmm. like, all right, whatever. And yeah, she was always yeah. popping up on the uh, the calls whenever we would have our reviews. I was like, oh, that's yeah. so cute. She loved her Your little voice in the background, mommy. Mm -hmm. What's up, David? Hey, David, if you want to write a book, this is the person you need to talk to right here. Okay, I'm just letting you know, David. That's my guy. So, what? Uh, we're talking about relationships right now too. So what could you tell a guy, like three things you could tell a guy that has a woman, a wife, a spouse or whatever. And, you know, maybe he doesn't know how to support her or what to do in this situation. And she's chasing her dreams or trying to become who she wants to become. What are like some things you could tell him? Like three things, maybe. Ask her what she needs. Mm. You know, when I came to my husband and I had the idea for divine legacy publishing, he looked at me and he said, okay, well, then you're going to launch January 1st. Hmm. I said, I'm sorry, who is going to do what when? <laughs> because I was talking to him on December 16th. Right. And I was like, no. And he was like, what you need, a logo? All right. What you need, a website? Go call Sam. Yeah. Like, what's stopping you from doing it? You know, don't, don't come to me with, no. His whole thing is, don't come to me with a problem or an idea. And mm -hmm. then when I give you the solution, you turn you're it like, down. oh, but wait. Yeah. So yeah. You know, but that's a good thing, you know, because mm -hmm. they'll ask me, all right, so what do you need to make? Like, what are you, what do you want? What do you need to make it happen? So mm -hmm. ask, you know, and if she says, I don't know what I need to make it happen, then you sit yeah. down and brainstorm with her because she might just need to bounce an idea off and kind of work it out in her mind. So mm -hmm. be your sounding board, you know, be your support, be your sounding board, but also don't be afraid to be like, you're doing too much. Yeah. Back it up. What can you, you know, because he, he'll tell me you're taking on too much. You need to sit down somewhere. And I'm like, no, but I got to finish. <laughs> you need to sit down. Go sit down somewhere. Yeah. All right. So that helps though. That helps. It does because then I'm like, okay, you know, because in my mind, it's like this dude sees me every day. Mm -hmm. So he's going to notice I'm get, if I'm getting run down, if I'm getting too stressed out. You know, uh, there was a period where I was kind of stressed out and I wasn't sleeping. So yeah. he would get up for work in the morning at like 6 45 and I'm still up. 
And he was like, (laughs) have you been to bed yet? No, Uh, you need to go to bed. And he'll take, he would take the computer from me and tell me go to bed. And I'm like, well, that was aggressive, but okay, fine. (laughs) But you need that probably because if he was, if he just lets you do whatever you want, then you probably wouldn't listen. (laughs) I barely listen, but yeah. (laughs) All right. So those were good points. Let's see here. Oh, and one more for the lady. So on her side, what have you learned? So, you know, what has helped you communicate better with your husband who is trying to motivate you? Because we both know that in relationships, the motivator could also be the one that seems threatening or pushy or whatever. So like, how could the lady prepare herself to receive the motivation? You got to be open to it and don't Mm. have an attitude like I sometimes (laughs) do. You know, mm. be open to it. If if your dude loves you, then he's not going to say something that's going to hurt you. Yeah. You know, he's saying it, you know, when he was telling me to sit down somewhere, it wasn't because he didn't want me to complete right. what I had to do or to, you know, stop or give up. It was because yeah. he saw me looking run down. I got bags under my eyes and <laughs> I'm drinking 10 cups of coffee a day because... Yeah. I'm so tired. And, you know, so don't don't be adverse to receiving some feedback, you know, some mm-hmm. I send stuff. I just posted a new blog on my um, my my uh, retro modern Mandy blog about tips for homeschooling. Mm-hmm. I sent it to him before I put it up there. You know, he does have a degree in journalism, so it's not yeah. like I'm sending it just randomly. But he changed some things. In it. And at first I was like, hey, yo. Mm hmm. Let me change right? <laughs> but the changes he made made sense. Mm-hmm. You know, I tend to be long and wordy and you can't be long and wordy on blogs. That's not how that yeah. works. So yeah. like, no, you need to be more concise, precise, this, all the sizes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he was right. But for a minute there, I was like, hey, yo, I just said, read it. What you? Yeah. What you were oh, editing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he did he made it better. So you have to be open mm-hmm. to discussing, you know, if you're bouncing ideas off of someone and they say, I don't know about that idea, but, you know, maybe you could do this. Don't be mad. Yeah. That yeah, you might have been doing too much there. Yeah. That's true, though. That's that's really true. And it, it can help us be better authors and mm-hmm. writers. So as an author, do you feel like having a blog is something that all authors need to do or should do? Yes. I feel like for a couple of reasons, one of the biggest reasons is uh, before I put my book out, I put a little, you know, little teeny short stories Mm -hmm. on my blog. And I had so many people say, I read your your short story on your blog. Where's your book? So (laughs) just a showcase of your talents. And if people see that and they get a chance to look at that for free, they're more apt to buy your book. You know, mm. don't put entire chunks of books up there or, you know, these long, short stories where they feel satisfied that they've read a book and so they don't mm. have to buy your book. But you definitely want to showcase your abilities so that yeah. way they're like, oh, OK, well, let me go get your book real quick because I want to see more. Mm. So would they start the blog before writing that book or should they start their blogs after publishing their book? I did mine before. So I I posted my first short story and oh, it might've actually been about four years ago today. Yeah. Yeah. Four years ago today, or well, this month anyway, it was in April. I think it was like maybe mid April of 2016. And my book came out in August of 2016. Mm -hmm. And I shared the links to the, um, to the blogs and, I posted them everywhere. And by the time my book came out, people were waiting for it. Hmm. So preparation. So preparing for your book release. So getting into that, um, let's say, so they hire you, Divine Legacy Publishing, Mm -hmm. LLC, right? Because that's what you do. So, all right, let me, hold on. Let me write down so I can remember because I got short-term memory. So so we're talking about blogging and what to do. So I want you to tell them what you do as a publisher, like as a self-publishing coach, like outside of the author part, what do you do with that? 
So with Divine Legacy Publishing, my goal was to create a publishing company that allows authors to self-publish. So you, you know, and, and Alan can vouch for this. Alan has told me he's done well with his book, but I can't give you any numbers because I haven't seen any numbers. I don't ask for any numbers. I want y'all to make as much money as you humanly possibly can, but I don't control royalties. I don't touch, I don't issue checks. I don't handle book sales or anything like that. I teach authors how to self-publish. Mm -hmm. And there's in the past, it's starting to whittle away a bit, but in the past there was a stigma on self-publishing um, authors. They didn't know how to do this. Their books didn't look professional. They weren't affiliated with the publishing company, so they self-published themselves. So, you know, they, they couldn't even get picked up by a self-publishing company or a, or a traditional publishing company and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. So my goal was to be a publishing company, but not in a traditional sense that I control your marketing and I control your royalties, but to teach authors to self-publish and then kind of have a community, a family, if you will. Yeah. That we support each other. You know, we we go and do events together. We throw events together and do all of that and mm -hmm. teach all the things that I had learned self-publishing. Yeah. That's, that's so, the gist of it. So why should anyone join your team of publishers? Because it's a, I mean, it's a family, you know, we don't, yeah. we don't do, you know, some of the other publishing companies you see infighting, you see um, competition, you see <laughs> author Michelle, she said, hold our hands from start to finish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do do that. <laughs> um, and I, I, my goal was really to create a family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you can see, Alan, you can vouch for it. You know, mm -hmm. that's kind of, you know, what I've done. We have a community. We do stuff together. We look out for each other. Um, there is no competition. The, the erotica authors support each other, share each other's book right. things. Hey, if you like my book, you'll love this book. Um, you know, I we support each other's events and, you know, share that. So that was my goal. And, um, and that's what kind of sets me apart. You know, you get to talk to people. We have a Facebook group. We talk to each right. other. We write books together. You know, who's writing now, who's doing this, um, travel together. Some of us have traveled together, shared hotel rooms at different events. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that was my goal because, yeah. you know, people don't know some of these publishing companies remind you of death row records back in, <laughs> And like it's, done like, right here. <laughs> it's books though why are we yeah. east coast west coast and books right. that's what's happening right. here no don't yeah. do that. that's terrible that's true. so yeah. it was my goal to be the opposite of that mm -hmm. yeah and i can i can all you know vouch for the the camaraderie the family setting the consistency and the support so definitely you know shout out to divine legacy publishing you know, for yeah. their awesomeness, you know, and I, I look forward to writing many more books after my procrastination period of the coronavirus. So, <laughs> so they said they're banging out more books. Oh, banging over books. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So let's they get on to gang banging over books. <laughs> banging over books. Like, gang banging over books. I was like, this is intense. Yeah. It, I mean, that, that setting is. So here's another question. So you you know you just published your book and you want to tell people about it, right? Um, average Americans, we feel like, oh, I don't want to tell people about my book, and I don't want them to feel like they have to buy my book because I don't want them to feel like I'm after their money, right? We get that mentality, like, oh, they think I'm asking for money. So what are some ways that a new published author could market themselves and how can they get rid of that stigma of like oh well you know you, you get what i'm saying you got to drop that mentality a reader yeah. is going to read what is the difference between them going into barnes and noble and saying to the guy at the circulation desk i love romance give me a new romance author and then right. buy my book they're still sure. spending the money mm -hmm. my book is better yeah <laughs> so 
why not say, hey, I wrote a book? Now, that's not to say you be the annoying person that's popping up in everybody's um, DMs every 10 minutes. Right. Did you click my link? Here's my link. <laughs> Did you click the link? Did you click Did the you link? Subscribe? <laughs> Did you subscribe? Did you buy the book? Right. Can you leave a, can you leave a review? Mm -hmm. What are you doing right now? You know, yeah. so, you know, don't be that person. But why not tell them you have a book? Right. Why not say I've written this book. You may mm -hmm. like it. You may not like it. It may be that, you know, I announce it, but there's people on my friends list. They, they don't like romance. Right. You know, there's different things that people like. Well, then they're going to ignore it. But what about the 200 people on my list that do like romance? Mm hmm. That's true. Why not say, you know, go ahead. I have a, a sorority sister. She sells, she sells paparazzi. She knows that I am obsessed with things that look like vintage jewelry. Yeah. She hit me up and she was like, hey, I know that you don't like all of the things that we have because they look too modern, but look mm -hmm. at these three things that I just got in. They look like old school. Yeah. She sent me the pictures. I said, send me an invoice. Right. <laughs> So you never know until you ask. Yeah, you never know right. until you ask. And she knew that I didn't like, you know, the modern and I don't like dangly earrings, as you can see. Yeah. Where, you know, studs and I like things that look old fashioned and pearls. Mm -hmm. And but she knew that. So when she got them in, she hit me up with the pictures. And I literally the next thing I said was send me an invoice. You got yeah. me. So why not? Right. So do you feel like you've mastered that skill of presenting your your work to other people? Uh, <laughs> yeah. See, I've never been a seller, you okay. know, like even when I, I, I know the, put it this way, you back, you know, back in the day when everybody was working at those telemarketing firms, mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. They pulled me off the floor because I scored really high. I knew what I was supposed to do. Right. You just couldn't do it. <laughs> But I was like, all right, you don't want these little Sesame Street books? Fine, I'll talk to you later. Have all right. <laughs> so, but I knew the concepts. And so they pulled me off the floor and they um, they made me a supervisor. Yeah. Because I could teach the concepts and I could give advice. But I have gotten a lot better. Um, I actually had a social distancing special on my books. Okay. Um, when everybody started getting this shelter in place and stay at home orders, I... Um, I made a little flyer that said, um, if you bought one or two of my um, print books, I would mm -hmm. give you, I have a novella that I put out at Valentine's Day, but it's only an ebook form. Yeah. So if you bought one of my books, one of my print books, I would ship it to you and email you a free um, Kindle version of my novella. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten a lot better. Yeah. I've so you, better with you, it. you add different like gifts to to bring value, even bring more value to your book. So you, mm -hmm. you have a book, say, hey, I got some bookmarks or yep. this and that. Right. And I send people I'm, I'm infamous for drinking tea. I love yeah. tea. And so um, anybody who buys print books from me, they get a little sachet of tea, um, different exotic flavors, one of which might or may not be an aphrodisiac. But we'll, <laughs> yeah, we'll buy might that. Might get your thing right. <laughs> yeah. So, but, um, but yeah, so I've, I've definitely, I had to learn. You have to mm -hmm. learn to be a self-published author. You're not, yeah. if you don't promote yourself, self is in the word. Self is in publishing. publishing. Right. <laughs> so you don't promote yourself. You're, you're, what are you doing? You're losing. So, you're wasting yeah. time. So I have to. I have to, you know, I don't yeah. have a choice, even if it's not my strong point. I also have to balance a household budget, but I hate math. You got right. to do what you got to do. Yeah, do what you got to do. That's a fact. So, like, have you, as an author, have you faced any like trials as an author? Like, you know, any setbacks, any like depressing moments where you were like not selling as much as you wanted? Like, give us an example of something you've been through as an author that we may go through as authors. Well, when I first put my book out, I did very well, very, very mm -hmm. well. I hit number one on my Amazon chart the day it came out because I'd done so many things prior to it. Um, but I hated living in Florida. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of my attention was taken by the fact that I really, really hated living in Florida. 
Yeah. You know, I had been in North Carolina since 1994. That was home. I could have dealt with going back all the way back to my original home, mm -hmm. but I was 12 and a half hours from my mother. I had her only grandchild at the time. Yeah. And it was just, I hated all of it. I just hated being there. And so yeah. my focus was taken off of promoting my first book when I should have still been promoting it mm -hmm. because I was so focused on the fact that I hated where I was. Yeah. And so I did waste that time. I, I came back and I'm, and you know, I, I, once I got my mind better, mm -hmm. I, was, I was okay and everything, but that was a really low time because I hated to, did I say yeah. I hated? Did I mention that I hated? <laughs> yeah, you said I hated Florida. I don't know. You might be the only person I hate Florida though. Well, <laughs> unless you was in the hood. <laughs> you was in the hood. I hated. Yeah. I, yeah. I wasn't. It was, we were in like a really rich area, oh. and I just I hated. Yeah. Florida. It was hot. The heat touches you. It's very disrespectful. Yeah. Like it, in your personal space, and you're like, no heat, back up, and the heat is like. Mm. So in your I, face. Ugh, there were alligators. They found a 12 foot alligator in the separate <laughs> area where we live. I was like, what are you, what do you mean? 12 <laughs> foot. I'm not even six foot. They do this double my height. Yeah. No, 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 <laughs> no. I want to go home. Yeah. We don't have these problems in North Carolina. Right. So that was, that was a tough time. And I didn't mm -hmm. focus on my book the way that I should have, but I regrouped, I came back and, mm -hmm that you know it was just the environment that i was yeah. in you know it affected me and um you know so that was a that was a tough time and then i had some people who told me i couldn't do it mm. who um encouraged me to go back and, and to go back to work when i was writing my book they were like no don't waste your time writing a book mm -hmm. nobody ever gets famous off of that and i was like i don't want to be famous i want to write my book right. you know, that wasn't the I guess end goal wasn't to be famous. It was mm -hmm. to write my book. Yeah. Um, but it 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 was, you know, a deterrent. You know, you have some of the people that are closest to you saying, don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and but me being who I am, got a little, just a little bit of an attitude problem. <laughs> like, well, you tell me I can't do something. Yeah. You best believe I'm gonna do it. You're gonna do because it. Because I'm gonna make sure that you eat your words. I'm gonna do yeah. everything in my human power to make you eat your words. Yeah. So even though it was disappointing that that happened, mm -hmm. it just fueled the fire. I already wanted to do it, but yeah. now I gotta prove to you yeah. that you were playing games. Yeah, okay. So what happens when someone takes that the other way? Like they get that, oh, you shouldn't do that and you should go back to work. Being an, a writer or a poet, whatever, is not uh, a successful you know, path. Like what should they do? Because some people take that information and not pursue the goal. They'll they'll go back to work and the nine to five. So like, what do you do at that moment? That pivotal moment? Like, what do you do? You got to tell yourself and you got to ask yourself, "Am I okay with this eating away at me?" Because hmm. even those there was eight years from when I started writing the book mm -hmm. to when I finished it. Yeah. And those eight years it was very frequent that I was like, man, I need to finish that book, man, yeah. I need to finish that book. And even though it was things that were kind of, you know, at one point my first full-time job was an hour and 20 minutes from my house. Mm -hmm. So I was literally driving an hour and 20 minutes teaching seven classes and then driving wow. an hour, right. Yeah. Right. to your professors. <laughs> I have no idea what we go through. Don't know. They don't know. But right. <laughs> but you know, so it was it was just there's no way I could have sat and wrote a book. You know, I had at least 25 students in each class. 25 yeah. times seven is a number I don't even want to talk about <laughs> in the way of grading papers right. and student sessions that you have to have. And so there was just no there was no way that mm -hmm. I could. Yeah. But it still ate away at me. You know, mm -hmm. I was driving to work and like, man, you know, and this was before the days of talk to text and things right. like that. Yeah. And if I could just take this time, I'd be able to, you know, sit and I'm not driving to work an hour and a half. You mm -hmm. know, it's going to eat away with you. So you ask yourself, am I okay with this continuously being in the back of my mind? Hmm. You know, it's not going to, maybe not going to keep you awake at night. Right. But it's going to bother you. Yeah. If you're okay with it bothering you, 
then then you yeah. know do what you got to do but That's otherwise story. get that book written right so so what are some things that you want people to know about you as a business owner you know that you know they they may want to know about the person that could be guiding them in their process of writing a book like what are some things they should know about you like are you are you i mean i know you're fun and then of course you have some personality some amazing personality Just and <laughs> so <laughs> so i can vouch for all of that you all can see right now that amanda is very approachable she is kind she is loving she is helpful so maybe that okay there it goes i just said it for everybody there you go you don't but i also <laughs> will continue to bother you even when you took that short break remember yeah i did yeah i took you a break still got, even though we weren't meeting every week you hey we, we was on the clutch schedule though like we yeah. made that happen i don't know if y'all understand but like it was like when do you want to write this book it was like uh you know october by october i think right it was uh mm -hmm. it was by october right but yeah, that was that was clutch. So if it wasn't for you, I probably would have sat on that for another two years or so. So because we do that, like if we don't have people like you who are, you know, driving us like, hey, do you have a, 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 out, a outline of your your book, your chapters, the themes like I didn't know. I didn't even think about like putting things together like, oh, the themes. I was just going to write a book with poetry. But you were like the themes, put the themes together. So, yeah, definitely. Um, a great addition to my journey. So I do appreciate you. And the biggest thing to remember about me is that, you know, back in the day, some of y'all might, I don't know what the age range for your audience is. Um, I might be dating we'll be myself away. here quite a bit. From the 77 is the 2000. So I'm just okay. <laughs> um, but uh, there, you know, the, the um, hair club for men where he mm -hmm. said, you know, I'm not just a, um, the president, I'm a client. Yeah. I'm an author. I know how it feels to have a book inside of you that you want to get it out. I know the frustration of trying to figure out self publishing. You know, I had, I didn't have a coach. Mm -hmm. I had a pile of books, right. <laughs> and websites, and, you know, going into some of these Facebook groups and asking questions only to get people who don't want you to succeed because mm -hmm. they want to succeed, not wanting to answer the question fully, you know? Right. I'd see me and other people ask questions and they'd be like, oh, well, look it up on Google. Bro, <laughs> your, your book came out. Your book right. came out, you know, you know what, know what we got to do. Share the information. You want right. to okay. Well, I'm not going to Google it. I'm going to go find a book or find somebody else who's not acting like you mm -hmm. and I'll figure it out. But, you know, yeah. so I know the frustration of not knowing and not understanding and trying to figure this out and trying to have the best version of your book mm -hmm. put, you know, forward. So, you know, I, I'm not only, you know, the president, I'm a client. <laughs> He's a client. <laughs> have hair clothes, so this is all me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, well, but I, I know that it's there. I'm not some company that manufactures this, that aren't even authors. I'm actually right. an author. You're going to stand next to me mm -hmm. at, you know, book fairs, at events. I'm going to be sitting there with you because even though I help you through this, we're the same. Like, I don't right. feel like I'm like, oh, Amanda's up here and everybody else. No, that I'm really just a round away girl. Except for when we, we all went out to eat. I got them. Except for when we all went out to eat and you made us all sit at a different table and you sat at your own table at the throne and you told us to kiss your feet. I'm just playing. She did not tell us. And that. that's not true. <laughs> not only is that not true, but I, just I, let, my, I let my thug slip and cried in front of everybody at the table. <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't get your little emotional roll on. I, 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 I let my thug slip. I had them tears. Yeah, so, so why was it so emotional for you to have all the, the authors there you know, um, why, why, what did that feel like to see, you know, the people that you've helped publish books it in was, one place? It was amazing. It was overwhelming to me because I looked up and everybody sitting at that table yeah, a year, two right. years before were aspiring authors. They, they didn't have books out, you know, they didn't have, and, you know, just to look around and see, you know, all the different genres, your poetry, yeah. there was self-help there. There was that type of other kind of erotica that we Yeah. Know. Oh. There was, was you know, Michelle stuff, huh? Michelle. Chains, <laughs> chains and ropes and. Yeah. 
<laughs> being gay. Right, right. <laughs> Michelle. Change is exactly who I was talking about. I know Michelle. About. Michelle, yeah. Michelle, she, Michelle, wow. <laughs> she wow. She's a disclaimer. <laughs> look but, you know, so <laughs> just look around and see different walks of life. You know, mm. military, you and, you and Brie, military. Yeah. Um, you know, former teachers, current teachers, um, mm -hmm. financial, pe like every walk of life was there, every type of genre, everything. And just to look and see everybody selling their books, holding their books, you know, and like, wow, I hope this happen. Yeah. That's you, Michelle, don't, don't do that. <laughs> to me. Mm -mm, no, ma'am. Mm -mm. uh, she's like, hey, me? Cutting up. So if um what advice would you give someone who wants to have their own publishing company? So like if they research. are like, hey, Mich hmm? research, 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 what type of publishing company do you want to be? You want to be traditional? You want to be self-publishing? Um, you know, what what type of book? Some there are some publishing companies that only publish a certain type of book. Mm -hmm. um, I'm friends with someone who owns a publishing company and she only publishes feminist um, nonfiction. Yeah. And they're great books, but, you know, she's narrowed down her, her genre of what she wants to work with. Mm -hmm. um, I know other publishing companies that only do what's considered urban or street lit. So, yeah. so I didn't want to narrow it down because I think that all literature is valuable, even if it's not my favorite genre, obviously. Yeah. My favorite genre. <laughs> Your favorite genre is that Graves, though. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. So, but you know, but I think that all books. I'm. I was the kid that you punished me from reading. I didn't get punished from TV. My yeah. mother punished me from TV. I didn't Take care. Books. She took my books, and then it was like literally, how could you do this? I thought I was your child. I thought you loved yeah. me. <laughs> Why would you do this to me? So. You know, I would read anything. When I used to get punished, mm. I'd sit at the, the breakfast table and read the back of the, the cereal box. Yeah. Because so you're an avid reader. I'm just an avid reader. Yeah. So I didn't want to narrow it down and say, I only do romance or I only mm. do this, I only do that. So, you know, but you need to research, figure out what type of publishing company do you want to be mm. and then build from there and take yeah. some business classes. I went from being a college professor who dealt in um, semesters. Mm -hmm. And I got a business coach because I didn't know anything about business. I was a teacher. Yeah. And my business coach, I'm still friends with her today. <laughs> hey, Sabrina. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. Sabrina asked me on one of our first calls. Mm -hmm. She said, "Well, what are your um, what are you Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 goals?" And I said, "I got them. Don't even worry about it. As soon as you tell me what a Q is, yeah, <laughs> what the Q and is." <laughs> she said, "Oh." Okay, so we, 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 okay, okay, all right, we're gonna dial this back a little bit. We're gonna go all the way back to fundamentals yeah. because I dealt in semesters. I had written yeah. gold down, but I had written them down in fall semester, spring semester, and right. to work on over the summer. Yeah. Because that was, you know, so if you're going to start a business, get a coach. Take get a coach. <laughs> Sabrina helped me immensely. Yeah. And then behind Sabrina, it was um, Donna. Mm -hmm. um, a fortress uh, career counseling. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. <laughs> the air got in my throat. Uh oh, like, don't let the corona the air is attacking me. But you know, <laughs> I enlist the help of others. If business isn't your thing, mm -hmm. please, please, please don't do like I did and try to figure it out. That's what yeah. coaches are there for. Get you a coach, they, okay. they will help you. And, so if, you know, if, just yeah. figure it out from there. Yeah. So what if someone is in the beginning stages of their, let's say, well, what can someone come to you if they're like, they don't even have the book typed up yet. They just have an idea. What, when should they come to you? Whenever. Okay. When if you think you can write your book, write your book, come to me for editing and we'll move on from editing to self-publishing and so on and so forth. If you have this idea for this banging story and you just cannot figure out where to start, how to lay it out, Come to me for writing coaching. I can literally take you from the concept to the completion. Everything in between. We're good. Everything in between. So they can come to you at any level or stage, no matter what, and um, work with you from there. So where could they go 
to get information. I do have our Instagram at the bottom scrolling across, but if you want to provide the website, we could do that. Or how should they, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Anyway, I'm, I work from home, so I see it if it comes through email. I see it if it comes through the website. I see even special people like me <laughs> by mail. <laughs> um, so the website is um, divinelegacypublishing.com. Um, okay. As you can see at the bottom, the Instagram is um, Divine Legacy Publishing. So is the Facebook. Now, because Twitter likes to limit your characters, and me and Twitter, we we beefing. But um, on Twitter, it's Divine Legacy Pub because I couldn't get the rest of the word in because yeah. you know, Twitter twits. So whatever. But, um, you know, that's that's how you can get me. My email is info at divinelegacypublishing.com. But you can also just send an email through the um, through the website if that's easier. OK. Info at Divine Legacy Publishing dot com mm-hmm. for the email. Damn, this thing right here. Watch this. Boo, watch this. Hey, so, look at technology. <laughs> oh, so yeah, that's all. That's so that's her contact right there. Um, and let me see if I had one more question before we finish. We're at like a 50 minute mark. This is that 50 minutes went by really fast. It really did. Oh, yeah. My last question is what advice would you give authors in your genre who are afraid to publish an erotic romance novel? What advice would you give them? Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. So, how many books have you written? Well, <laughs> written or published both how about that um okay so i have published five i have written eight and i have outlines for over 40 almost 50 jeez just send me like two of them in my mailbox and let me go ahead and put that out there so can, <laughs> and so my, my, my ones that i have out three of them mm -hmm. are erotic romance one of them is my graduate thesis mm -hmm. um, so it's nonfiction. And then I have a children's book series that I just started based on my daughter, Brooke. Oh, um, nice. My daughter is homeschooled, which, you know, apparently is a temporal anomaly. Um, black folks don't homeschool, but we really do. I promise we do. Yeah. Um, and so I wrote a book. My daughter is the main character and um, it's all about her homeschool adventures. And the first book is... Manina, I'm going to run them. I promise she's telling me to run out of books and give her. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I am. Um, but uh, it's called What Jobs Can Girls Do? And it features all the different women that Brooke knows and what jobs they do. She asked me the question one day and I was like, oh, you know, Auntie Tarika does this. She works for this and this one and this one. So I made a book because if my daughter had questions about what jobs can girls do, mm, that's pretty awesome. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. So I write a lot. I told you yeah. anything. I read and write anything. You give it to yeah. me, I write it. Same. I just really don't write horror because I scare myself. Yeah, I can't do it either. I probably have nightmares. I do. I tried. I, I tried and I scared myself. I tried to write a paranormal romance. How you gonna write yeah. a paranormal romance to scare yourself? <laughs> paranormal. Ridiculous. She was in the bed. He came up with a chainsaw. What? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Maybe I should write. I should write. Oh. Comedy, comedy, erotic novel, romance novel, like a comedy. Oh, comedy, erotic horror novel. You got a, a lot. Funny, that. that sounds yeah. like a Rocky Horror Picture Show. It, it <laughs> does. It sounds very good. It's like Scary Movie Three or Scary Movie Four or Five, <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> okay, so we're wrapping it up. And is there any last minute information you want to give to them? Uh, anything that you're working on now that you want them to know about projects, uh, dates um, for different live events or whatnot? I just relaunched my blog, retromodernmandy.com. Um, it's about me. It's literally me. Um, I was raised by older women, of course, mm -hmm. my mother. Um, but I was also raised by my grandmother who was born in 1936 and lived until I was 30. And my two mm -hmm. great grandmothers who were born in 1915 and 1918, one of them lived until I was 15 and the other one lived until I was 21. 
and yeah. so heavily influenced by these older women that were born at the beginning of the century, of yeah. last century. <laughs> and um, and so my husband's always called me grandma. That's his little nickname for me. <laughs> Granny. Yeah, grandma. Whatever. And um, but I just relaunched it because a lot of people were asking me, and you know, the face of the coronavirus, they're being forced to homeschool. Mm -hmm. And so I've had a lot of people hit me up because they know I'm, I'm very vocal about homeschooling, not that I force it on people, but that I just want to normalize it. I, homeschooling should be just as normal as children who go to public school. Yeah. You know, so I've been very vocal about it so that I give a face to it. You know, I'm mm -hmm. not, some, I, I definitely love my Jesus, but I'm not some yeah. fanatic, which has been tied to homeschooling. I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, obviously my my arms are showing. I don't wear my yeah. clothes down to my ankles. And, <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Um, and so I try to normalize it by, you know, I'm just a homeschooler. It's just what we do, right. regular people. And so um, a lot of people have hit me up. So I just, I relaunched it so that I could give tips on homeschooling to help folks during this time. Cause I've been homeschooling her since she was born. Okay. So that's almost seven years now. That's quite yeah. a long time. So, you know, there's some tried and true, um, things that I do. And so, and then I also talk on the blog about other mm -hmm. things. I just relaunched that. Um, and then um, I'm writing my next book should be out in August. If all things go well, it's yeah. actually retro modern man D E E. Oh, see, it got me messed up. Let me I, had to, I had to give it a twist because, you know, when you're named Amanda and your nickname is Mandy, it's like, eh, <laughs> really? Right. Thanks mom. Right, so, so retro modern M A N D E E. Com. Yep. And, um, you know, different things are up there. Uh, I have a blog uh, that I'm about to post called Adventures with Grown Up Knives. Ooh. And how we got a new knife set and didn't realize you're not supposed to put those in the dishwasher. <laughs> um, you got them all rusted out, up. Yep. Found out the hard way. That was a bad idea. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, just different things, different um, tips. I have, my daughter has a uh, food allergies and mm -hmm. nuts. And so she, um, she, uh, can't have shea, almond oil, coconut oil. So we spent some really ashy days yeah. trying to figure out what we were going to do. Yeah. So we didn't set her allergies off. And so, um, there's a blog up there, uh, so it was six anti ashy tips for nut mm -hmm. allergy sufferers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I also, I need to look at that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also a vegetarian. Yeah. Um, and uh, we do all organic food and stuff like that. And so people mm -hmm. are like, oh, you eat twigs? Yeah. Well, I don't eat no twigs. Who eats twigs? <laughs> I eat leaves. Right. <sighs> I'm just fine. <laughs> like, oh, all you eat is tofu. <laughs> oh, I've never heard tofu a day in my life. No tofu chicken. Tofu chicken? <laughs> so, you know, Understood. normalizing that and. Yeah. You know, explaining exactly what organic food is. People are like, oh, you eat all that fake stuff. No, actually yeah. the organic stuff is the not, see that. Not so fake stuff. That's not fake right. stuff. Right. They got to switch oh. it around. Yeah. So, so they yeah. can find all of that at retromodernmandy.com. Okay. Cool yeah. beans. Awesome. Well, Amanda, thank you so much for having, I mean, having me. <laughs> thank you so much for being on the Purpose Pod. I really do appreciate you and I'm honored to have you on here. Um, thank you. And if you guys want to get in touch with her, please follow the links. Ask me if you can't read and we will get that to you. Uh, if you want to write a book, if you're thinking about writing a book, but you're not sure, hit up Amanda today. Not today, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, but yeah, and this is the best time to write a book. This is now is the best time to start writing a book. Now is the best time to get a coach to help you publish your book. And Amanda Divine Legacy Publishing Company is the company you want to go to. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. Amanda. All right. See you. Bye. Bye. All right. So this is the closing of the Purpose Pod. We had an amazing, amazing show with Miss Amanda Chambers, and it was amazing. So she is a, a published author and she is a publishing coach. So if you want to publish a book, if you're thinking about publishing a book, please do it. Um, don't waste any time on your dreams. Don't waste time on the goals that you have. If you want to write a book, write a book. If you're thinking about writing a book, write a book. 
if you're if you're dreaming about writing a book, write a book. Everyone has a story to tell, and then you can tell your story through someone else's life. Like you can create a character and just tell a story about them in your book. But please do not hold your gift inside. Let it out. Let the world see it. Be great. This is the Purpose Pod, where you can get motivated and inspired. I'm your host, Alan Simmons. Peace.